so I'm out in the rural landscape in Canada today and you can see a number of different conventional treatments that are being done right now and how we need to move away from that agricultural in intensive industrial type of farming. So here you can see every year the land is tilled and taken right back to soil and so that's releasing a lot of carbon into the atmosphere, carbon that you need to keep in the soil because that soil organic matter is extremely important for holding the moisture in the soil and tilling it all the time increases the microbial activity and it changes the chemistry of your soil, it changes the, the microbial community with repeated tilling, you're changing the community from fungal with your fungal hyphae are long and thin and they're very delicate. They break up very easily and you can kill them. And so you're shifting it towards more of a, a bacterial community and it takes a long time for the, re the fungus to reestablish itself. And so one of the things that you can do is kind of a, a first step is instead of leaving your soil bare all winter, is putting a cover crop on it like this. So the cover crop, this is kind of a, the conventional type of cover crop. It's one single species co covering the entire area. It's probably oats. And all the species in between are weedy species that are coming up in between. And in the spring, Usually what they do is uh, they'll till it again. So you're going from till, tilling and leaving the land completely to tilling it and then putting a cover crop, which is better. You're holding the soil, you're giving some nutrients to the, microbi the microbiome beneath. And this has got a lot more weeds, so it's giving a little bit of diversity, but I mean, it's all weedy species. If you're going to go for a cover crop, instead of going monoculture, more and more people are realizing that they need to put in a whole mixture, a whole diversity of different species. You want your nitrogen fixtures, you want your grasses, you want your, your herbaceous species, so that you're, you have a, a much more diverse group of species in the vegetation cover, but, and that also gives you a much more diverse variety of microorganisms in the soil so you're supporting those microorganisms and if we find that if you have grassy species then you'll, you'll develop the microbiome for grass species. If you have herbaceous species then you're developing the microbiome for herbaceous species. And you need to think about that when you when you're you're doing your planning for your your garden or for your large scale agriculture. You need to think, okay, what am I planting next? And then you do it appropriately. Okay, I'm going to be planting more grasses, and so you need to to have more of a grass mix because that'll support the the microbiome. The other consideration is that if you're doing conventional agriculture, the industrial agriculture, your the reason they do corn and soybeans and corn and soybeans, one the soybean is a nitrogen fixer and the corn is a is a heavy nutrient user and so they're switching back and forth, but also they're disrupting the pest population because you're moving from a dicot to a monocot and then back to a dicot. So you don't get as much a buildup of pathogens and uh, insect problems that when you're switching back and forth between monocots and dicots. In a more organic situation, you would just mix everything together and, and tr you're tr aiming to have a lot more biodiversity in your site and you're trying to minimize the amount of monocultures that you're creating. Another aspect I can show you here is the, the ditch system. So, in this conventional agricultural setting, you have huge agricultural fields, and then at the side of your field, you've got these ditches. And within the field, you've got what's called drainage tiles. So you're moving all the moisture off the land into these drainage areas, 
and it's quickly moving all that water off the land and in the spring okay maybe you want that you want to warm the land but later on in the season when we're getting more and more drought and more and more dry conditions that's not advantageous you're not you don't want to be taking all that water away you want to be storing it so kind of the next step up is what we call no-till agriculture so basically you're you're harvesting your crop off and then leaving all the stubble on the field and the next year then you come in with a drill that cuts through all the stubble and then you plant your seed straight into the stubble and it allows the species to come up and what you're doing is leaving all that organic matter on the top of the soil so you're armoring it you're protecting the soil and the microbiome beneath it and planting into it like that protects it increases the amount of moisture in the soil because you have a little bit of a, a mulch layer over the top and the the drill actually has a special the drill has a special cutter that actually cuts a line through the stubble and then drops the seed and then the seed pops up through there on this side you can see corn This side is your, your typical corn crop and you can see that it hasn't been done with it's done in a conventional way and you see a lot of bare soil and all that bare soil is moisture moving into the atmosphere and the soil dries out very quickly and so it's not a really healthy conditions for microbiome and because it's going through this till plant till plant you're you're reducing the amount of nutrients in the soil and because you don't have a healthy microbiome down there you're not renewing the nutrients the nutrients aren't being broken down the nutrients aren't being broken down by the microbiome the parent material isn't being break it, broken down and releasing the phosphorus and different micronutrients so when you don't have a healthy microbiome, you're, you're reducing the amount of nutrients in the soil, you're reducing the moisture holding capacity of the soil, and you're causing more and more problems. So obviously you're gonna to have to increase your fertilizer inputs and you're gonna to have to increase the amount of, of watering you're gonna do. You can see in the background that normally this corn grows much higher, but because it's been a very dry year, we have much shorter corn this year so it's not holding the moisture in the soil.